Hi Fiona, um, I'm here just recording a short video of you talking about TMS and I'll ask, I'll ask you a few questions. Uh, well, first of all, what is TMS? Uh, TMS stands for Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation. It involves basically stimulating the brain. It's um, a treatment that was basically designed for people with um, serious depressive illness, meaning that um, medications have failed uh, last resort, so to speak. It's not um, approved for children, it's not regulated actually, and in London, the Harley Street Clinic that I spoke to recently told me that um, it is only you know, available for adults, basically, and certainly not available to treat autism, which is why I'm so concerned, because it is being used to treat autistic children and adults, as, as you know, at the moment. Okay, yeah, because you've been talking about it, and um, a very... Uh, high profile person is promoting it and you've put it out there saying that it's wrong but you haven't been getting much feedback on that um no i mean what's really worrying me i suppose is that as you know we're battling this um nightmare of unregulated products treatments like lms gcmf collation etc and um i really think this is a very serious um situation because it involves the brain um, it involves almost like changing um, how the brain is performing and these are with very young children. For instance, um, I contacted clinics in America and um, discovered in California in the Brain Treatment Center, which is actually um, affiliated to Autism Speaks, they actually promote this clinic on their website, which is even more concerning. I rang them and I have a seven minute conversation um, and in that conversation, they told me that they are giving this uh, uh, TMS treatment to three-year-old children, that they're doing research and experimentation on children as well. Um, it's a very costly treatment as well. When I spoke to the Holly Street Clinic, you're talking thousands of pounds for like a block. And um, I just find it frightening. And, and what's more worrying is the fact that um, we see autism consultants like Robeson, who has written a book called Switched On. Um, I haven't read the book. Um, I don't really intend to read the book. I have spoken to him about this on Twitter and told him that I'm very concerned that he's actually promoting an unregulated and an unproven treatment for autism. He says he's not. He says it's um, basically a reflection of his own experience with TMS. I don't agree with that. I refute that strongly because um, he's making videos. Um, he's holding up placards saying TMS is great. Um, He's holding seminars and talks, and he's profiting from this as well, just to make sure that he is, he is gaining an income from this. Because he has the title of an autism consultant, that gives him a responsibility. Um, his um, promotion of this is influencing parents of autistic children. I've seen so many comments now, oh my goodness, I'm going to seek this for my child, this is wonderful, isn't he great? And more worrying, I've seen autistic adults actually getting excited about the possibility of using TMS. Um, most recently I saw a comment on John's Facebook page which said, I can't wait to get my brain switched on. So it's not just parents of autistic children, it's actually autistic adults as well that are getting excited about this treatment. A treatment that's not regulated, a treatment that's not approved for children, a treatment that's not authorised for autism. Um, I think that's kind of serious and I have shared blogs and there's another lady out there called Sonia who's been um, writing about this as well and you know with MMS we get like this outcry this is a serious issue this is playing with somebody's brain I mean John has described it as um, a magical experience with hallucinations um, I've also seen very um, worrying quotes from his book which Sonia shared in a great blog just earlier today actually and um, you know how it was kind of a harrowing experience for him I think this man is like, I don't know, nearly 50, I'm not sure of John's age. We're talking about three-year-old children here, babies, with their brains still developing. Does he not have any consideration to what he's doing here? How he's influencing people? Whether he's not going out there and saying, hey, use this on your child. He is making parents seek this treatment, and he's completely ignoring that fact. Um, I'm an autistic advocate, I have Asperger's, you know, I would never condone or promote something like that. Um, I just find it absolutely reckless, actually, for want of a better word. And um, we have that treatment, TMS, then we also have this other treatment that's being used, uh, another brain treatment experiment called neurofeedback. Again unproven, again not regulated. It's being used here in Ireland. Uh, so what we're seeing now is not the awful concoctions like MMS, bleach and GC math. We're seeing these 
invasive, and they call them non-invasive, I think playing with someone's brain is pretty invasive. Um, I've also seen a parent write about TMS when she was um, involved with Dr. Bradstreet's um, research program on 28 children when he was using TMS, and how it affected her child, her daughter. She wrote about it. It was horrific. The child deteriorated rapidly. She was screaming with pains in her head. She had her teeth chattering, which is a real common um, symptom from TMS. Um, seizures are common. So we're giving this to um, autistic children, in some of them which have um, seizures, and it's actually encouraging seizures. I mean, this is a serious issue, guys. Wake up, you know? The autistic community, wake up. Don't keep thinking that Elder is this like, amazing neurodiverse guy, because he's not. Um, you know, his language in his book as well, which I saw quotes again today, is really just, you know, ableist and all about the brain and trying to make it like neurotypical and being in the dark because you're autistic and then being able to see. I'm not in the dark, you know, and um, I have empathy, you know, I have feelings. Actually, if anything, I have an abundance of empathy. And I think he's making a generalization on what it's like for the autistic experience. It's his own personal view. But he's not making that clear enough. And um, the fact that he's holding seminars and talks, and that we have to telegraph recently reporting on this, um, that worries me. And none of the media are investigating this properly. They're not actually making a statement that this is not a regulated treatment. And I have talked to a journalist again today about this. Hopefully, hopefully somebody will actually report on the truth about TMS and what's going on, because they're not doing it as we speak. Okay, and uh, well, the, 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 it is John Elder Robertson yes. we're talking about, That's because right. I don't think we actually mentioned his full name um, before this. Um, and, and I mean, just to close, I mean, the, it, this does have side effects. Yes, it does. It has side effects. And I suppose there is very little known about the actual long-term effects. I mean, who knows what will happen, and the fact that it has to be continually chopped up as well, which it's, well, it, sound, it sounds very much like another just unproven money-making racket for some people um, and like you said if it was somebody else not like John Elder Robinson say someone like um, Carrie Rivera who was doing it yeah. then the reaction of the autistic community would be very different yeah, that's but what because I it's really him because he, he, ha he has a standing and he, people are I afraid to speak out against him but you know well to me I've had people message me on Facebook saying I I shouldn't be speaking like this about John I have this is not a personal attack on John um, I think he's probably a very gifted writer and um, and, I, and, I, and I'm not having any kind of a personal um, you know this is not a personal thing I care about children I care about adults I care about parents being fleeced which is what's going on here and just one more point that the college um, or the university that John did have his treatment done or his experiment or whatever you want to call it I've spoken to them as well and they have confirmed to me that they do not want to be affiliated with John's promotion or what he's doing because they don't offer it for autistic children or adults mm -hmm. they unless they completely have a turnaround um, they made that clear to me. I did do a lot of research into this. I ran clinics. It took me a lot of time and effort. And um, I just think that people need to wake up. Just because an autistic person is saying that this is great doesn't mean you should just, you know, be blinded with pseudoscience and not address it. Yeah, if Kerry Rivera was doing this, Bradstreet was doing this, and um, it was, I think, one of the main events at Autism One in 2014. And, um, and then we have Autism Speaks promoting this as well. It's criminal. I just don't understand. It's all right for the adults, isn't it? Like John, you know, taking that gamble on his brain and on his health. You know, but does he actually care about the child that is, you know, strapped to a chair with this contraption on their head? With the side effects, which range from seizures to sin scope to headaches to teeth chattering, which he talks about in his book. John does talk about experiencing that. How horrible. How awful for a little baby or a three-year-old child to have to suffer that. When none of this is proven to be effective. None of it. They're little lab rats and guinea pigs, you know. And I don't want to make that point because we're heading into Autism One in May, okay? It's happening May 23rd, I think. And there's a group of American uh, ladies, men, whatever, who've, who've gathered together to protest this, and that's great. Um, at the end of the day, the people who are suffering are autistic children and adults. The parents are being robbed and they're being influenced. And I suppose what's really, really important here, and I have to make this point before we close, is when they see an autistic person come out and say this is wonderful, 
they will listen to that person more than anybody else because they are on the spectrum. So his responsibility is, is a really powerful thing here. And that's why I'm making this point, because I don't think people are listening to me. And, um, and John, if you do watch this, John Elder Robeson, you know, I have asked you to talk to me about this, and you have not answered my questions. You have said you do not promote. I completely refute that. Videos, the books, the talks, your tour, you know, you're pretty much hitting every corner of the globe with this. Talk to me and listen to me from an advocate to another advocate. And I'm a mother to autistic children, and I feel very passionately about this. Um, there's ethical issues here, there's consent issues here, there's risk factors here, and there is experimentation going on here, which is what this is. And if you don't think that's serious enough to discuss, then maybe you should step down as your role of being an autism consultant, because I don't think you should be operating under that title. Write about your experiences, your wacky hallucinations, whatever's going on, that's cool. But don't go out there and hold that title as an autism consultant, because you are affecting people when you say you are an autism consultant and you are giving them the go-ahead to look into this quackery which is what it is so please listen to me and realize at the end of the day someone is getting hurt as a result of this quackery that's all I want to say and I hope that the autistic community will listen to me and listen to my concerns regarding TMS neurofeedback or any of these unregulated brain zapping treatments or whatever they are Thanks so much for listening, guys. Well, thanks, Fiona. Night.